For more on India's elections, I'm joined by Sumit Ganguly. He's a professor of political science at Indiana University, and he's currently the university's chair in Indian cultures and civilizations. Professor, tens of millions have already cast their ballots. How do things look for Narendra Modi and his main challenger, legacy politician Rahul Gandhi? Well, Modi's prospects have dimmed somewhat uh, because uh, the luster of his regime has uh, come off. A number of the programs that he instituted have only partially worked, and some have been abject failures, particularly the emphasis on demonetization, which took place last year, which took, took out millions of rupees, uh, the unit of Indian currency, out of the Indian economy in a very abrupt fashion and left people who worked in the, in, in, the, in the informal economy in fairly dire straits. It was designed ostensibly to take out untaxed money and also uh, to, uh, to put an end to corrupt practices and also take out counterfeit uh, funds out of the Indian economy. It's not entirely clear that this enterprise worked and it actually hurt lots of poor people. People. Furthermore, Modi has not been able to do much to relieve rural distress, to tackle unemployment, which is at an all-time high, and consequently, the sheen has come off his regime to some degree. By the same token, Rahul Gandhi is not a particularly galvanizing speaker, he's not a particularly mesmerizing speaker, and also I think there is a degree of tiredness in the Indian electorate with the dynasty, with the Gandhi dynasty that he represents. You know, so, five, five years so ago. No, so, five, yes, go ahead, sorry. Five years ago, you know, we spoke about elections back then, and the biggest issues were the economy climate change and infrastructure, do they remain the same? Well, infrastructure has been addressed to some degree under Modi. One has to give credit where credit is due. Uh, but uh, unemployment uh, and inequality still remain uh, major issues. As far as climate change is concerned, frankly, that's mostly an elite concern and an urban concern, because that's where you witness the effects of climate change along with uh, sort of rapid economic growth. The two are colliding in important ways in major urban centers in India, where India has some of the most polluted cities in the world. What impact, if any, will recent interactions with neighboring Pakistan have on voters? My suspicion is that it will sway voters in northern India, which is in proximity to Pakistan. There, amongst a segment of the electorate, I do believe that this very muscular stand that Modi took in the wake of a terrorist attack on the 14th of February, which was traced to Pakistan, uh, will probably sway a portion of the electorate. But I doubt that it will have a nationwide impact where in other parts of India, local and regional issues will be of far greater significance to voters. This is a marathon election. A lot could happen uh, between now and mid-May. Are there any key turning points that you will look for? Well, much, uh, the, one of the things that I will look for very keenly is the uh, level of turnout, because that will give us an important indicator of the level of enthusiasm that exists about this election. Uh, there have been some polls which suggest that there is a degree of apathy on the part of voters, and consequently there has been some commentary about the unwiseness of this, that the, the sheer importance importance of uh, casting one's vote, of exercising one's franchise, has been emphasized by commentators and who have argued that an apathetic attitude is perhaps the worst. And the apathy in large part stems from the lack of enthusiasm about either major political party, but that may not extend to regional parties and their voters may come out in droves. Professor Ganguly, thank you for joining us.